Hey, it's Ruben here, and today I'm going to review the Zoom H8, an 8-track recorder with touchscreen applications for podcasting, music recording, and field recording. So, I also have the H6 here, which is its smaller brother, although its box is a little bit bigger than the H8. So, I've tried all the handy recorders by Zoom from the H1, the H2, the H4, and the H6, which I use almost every single day, and the H8 which is sent to me by, again, thank you CK Music for sending me one of these for me to test so I can show you and unbox this in front of you. Do a bit of sound test with it so you can hear its sound and let you decide if this is something that you want to add to your arsenal of recording gear. So let's get to it. So, in comparison between the H8 and the H6, well, both of these records up to 96 kilohertz, 24 bits, which is, you know, more than, more, more than enough for a lot of recording and audio uh, applications, right? In comparison with the H6, now something that the H8 does not come with, or a few things in fact, is the H8 only comes with an XY mic capsule which you attach on top of the portable audio recorder. Now the H6, or in comparison, right, it comes with an additional, uh, uh, instead of the just the XY microphone, it also comes in with the mid-side mic capsule. Uh, which in all fairness, I don't find much users and I don't really use it as well. So having it not coming with the H8 is okay for me, right? The H6 also comes with a carrying case like this and you have your stuff like the pop filter which you put on top the XY microphone and of course the mid-side capsule which you attach above your recorder. So let's talk about the H8, okay? So the H8 is an 8-track recorder, like I mentioned earlier, and with the additional adapter which you can buy separately and attach it above the audio recorder, you can potentially record up to 12 inputs simultaneously on a multi-track, right? And if you look down at the device itself, well, now the difference between the H8 and the H6 is that H8 works on a touchscreen application. That means instead of using drop downs, so Back then in the H6, right, we had to use drop downs, the physical drop down uh, here, to basically select the operations on the device itself. Okay? Now on the H8, it's based on a touch screen application. And we have three major applications included with the H8. So the first one, which is the field recording application, allows us to go into a field recording mode for the H8. So this is for you when you're doing things like sound effects, recording fully, and you know recording on the field right now it also has a music application this is great for when you're recording things like a band setup or recording music in general so you can have up to 12 inputs on the zoom h8 and we have the podcast application which is something that i think everyone is into these days so with the podcast application it's a little bit interesting because you can record up to four inputs simultaneously so you can have four speakers in a room, four microphones attached into the Zoom H8, and you also have four sound pads to create sound effects. So, you know, in the midst of recording your podcast, you can have, you can trigger sound effects to add on to your sound, uh, to your podcast as well, okay? So one thing really interesting about the Zoom H8 is that you can use it as a portable audio recorder to record directly into an SD card inside the device, or you can also use it as a mixer. So for example, if you were to use it for a podcast uh, setup, right? You can have, you can record your podcast straight away or use it as a mixer together with your sound pad and the sound effects and line out from the device into an external mixer or into your laptop or smartphone for streaming. So that's something, right? Now I wanna show you what's inside, do a bit of sound test and let you decide if this is for you. So let's get to it. I'm gonna unbox this. So inside the Zoom H8, right? You can see it's really simple. I'm gonna unbox this for you. And you can see there's nothing much inside here except your manuals, which you can read if you want to, right? And inside here, you have nothing more than just your microphones. I'm gonna pull out this one, your XY microphone here, and the audio recorder itself. There we go. Put this here. And let's talk about the audio recorder first. I'm going to show you a close-up later, so don't worry. So this is the H8, the Zoom H8. So on first glance, you have your touchscreen below, right? You have six inputs on the device itself, four XR inputs up here, and we have 
two compo jacks that allows you to plug in uh, XLR or an input level like a guitar or a line or like a keyboard or more, right? And with the XY microphone that comes supplied with it, what you can do is just plug it into it like that. And of course, you can buy the separate um, mic capsules that are sold separately from shotgun microphones, from a surround microphone to record ambient um, sound and you know, you can go and check out the, the, all the different types of mic capsules you can add to the Zoom H8. Now, I don't think that's necessary unless you really like the microphones, the sound of the microphones that is supplied by Zoom. Anyway, let's get into a close-up and I'll show you what's on the device itself. So here I have the H8 and H6 side by side in comparison. You can see the H8 is slightly bigger than the H6, but it's not necessarily heavier than the H6 though. So let's talk about the H8 and let's talk about what we see on the device. So first off, we have eight inputs. So your XY microphones is one and two. And then on the left and right, we have four XR inputs, one, two, three, and four. On the sides, these are basically combo jacks. So it inputs XR and also line instruments. So a quarter inch jack, right? And basically you change the different inputs by turning down this pad here, choosing whether it's mic or a high Z input for line instruments, basically. Now, we can see that we have the gain for basically your XY, which goes above like this, put that back. And basically the gain uh, dials for basically all the inputs, okay? So these buttons here are basically for you to arm your tracks. And if you look down the bottom, we have the SD card um, input here, which I already have an SD card, a full size SD card inks here. There we go. And we have a line out. This is for you to line out into a mixer or more right here. Okay. And then down here we have the on button and for you to hold. So when you change it to hold, what's going to happen is basically uh, on hold position, nothing is able to be depressed. So this is amazing for during recording. So you don't want any accidental touches on the device, right? And you can see that we have an additional module here and you would have to buy a separate Bluetooth module called the BTA1, BTA1. And this allows you to connect the H8 via Bluetooth to your smartphone on iOS and control the H8 using an application on your iOS device. Now, there's also the micro USB input, which you can use to power up the device and to transfer data as well. And we have our headphones for monitoring on the right-hand side corner. And of course, this is your buttons to go back to home, play and pause, record. So that's the H8. So one thing that we can do is I'm going to actually power up the H8 using uh, a power adapter like this, power bank, and basically plug into the USB like this. Okay, so we're going to turn on by pushing the button to the left like that and it's up. So that's the beauty of the H8, right? You don't really need to run it with four AA batteries that you find behind. There. So anyway, this is the H8 and uh, I'm gonna go through a few things that we can see on the H8 and show you how it works, right? So it's based on touchscreen. If we type on the swipe to the right, we can see that we have more applications here from SD card reader, tuner for instruments and also guitar lab. I'm gonna swipe back and we can see that we have Feel app, Music app, and also Podcast app, right? So basically, going to Feel app, you can see that this launches the Feel recording mode. And to start recording, basically all you really have to do is just start to arm the microphones. So I'm gonna arm the XY microphones. And you can see this is already picking up sound, right? Right, and also to, you know, to multi-track, all you really have to do is just turn on and enable the inputs like this, right? And we can see that we have now multi-track. Now, obviously I do not have signal on the other inputs because I do not have microphones directly inside the inputs, right? And if we click both at one time, we basically separate the device, right? We can turn them into a stereo track by clicking them both at the same time. All right, so that's the field application setting. So if you go back to home, we can choose the music setting 
And of course, we can choose the recording format, uh, whether it's for the 4.1 or whichever that we want to record at. So we'll choose 48. And basically for the music application, we have to create a project first. So I'm gonna call this any project before we can start on to record. And there we go, we have our mixers here and there, right? Which also can be controlled via the touchscreen module here. So to arm this, we just have to turn on this and we can change the EQs, there's also compressors, effects that you can use on board straight away. Now, one thing that you wanna note is that when you are monitoring with, with headphones on the device, there's no physical button for your headphone outputs, right? So you have to turn this icon up here, this, and then switch the volume of your headphones, right? Much easier compared to using the H6, which is a physical button. Or if you prefer physical buttons, well, this would be much nicer on the H6. Well, for me, I prefer the H6 because I can feel the buttons. For this one here, I would have to click on that and then move up the monitoring level, okay? So that's the music app. So with the podcast app right now, you can see that we have... So the podcast app basically records up to four simultaneous uh, inputs microphones on one, two, three, and four, right? And additionally, it also has four sound banks. So to, to show you how this sounds like, right? Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line out from the device H8 here into my H6. To just show you how it sounds, right? I'm gonna line in into here. And I'm gonna arm this on the H6. All right, and basically on my podcast app, when you know I hit on things like the funky, you can hear that this is yeah. So these are basically very useful sound plaques that you can add as sound effects within your podcast when you're doing a podcast recording or live streaming at the same time. Interesting, huh? All right, and that's basically the Zoom. H8. So I'm going to be doing three sound tests with the Zoom H8 today. And the first sound test is to record it with an external microphone and to show you how it sounds. All right, so I'm going to turn on the Zoom H8 and basically with the XLR cable from the condenser microphone that I have here. This one is an Audio Technica AT2035, uh, one of the microphones that I use on a daily basis, right? So I'm going to plug in into the XLR input on the Zoom H8 and use the fill function. All right, so on the fill function here, I'm gonna go into my microphone settings here, go into track one, and make sure that the phantom power is on because this microphone requires phantom power. I'm gonna actually hit on the enable button, the recording, the arm track here, and we can see that we have signal already. So I'm gonna adjust the gain volumes a little bit to make sure my volume is in the same zone and is not clipping. And once I'm ready, I'm gonna hit on record and speak into this mic slowly so you can hear my voice. So I'm gonna hit on record. So right now, I'm speaking into the Audio Technica AT2035 that is going into the onboard preamps on the Zoom H8. And I'd like you to hear how this sounds. All right, and the second sound test I'm gonna do is to record directly on the XY microphones that are on top here, right? So I'm gonna point this at myself, uh, enable it by turning on the record arm button and hit on record. There we go. So right now, I'm speaking into the XY microphones on the Zoom H8, and you might find that it's very sensitive. In fact, you'll pick up sounds from around the room and I'm recording this in an untreated room so you hear the sounds from the fan, the AC and the ambient sound as well. And you also find that the sound on the XY microphones is thinner, not as bassy compared to of course the large diaphragm condenser microphone. There we go. So I hope you enjoyed that. Now for the third sound test, I'm going to be making a bit of music with the Zoom H8. So I'm going to be taking this around the house recording random items and make a track out of that. And everything is gonna be recorded with the Zoom H8. So I hope you enjoy this.
A few moments later. So, who is the Zoom H8 made for? In my opinion, the H8 is made for creators. Creators being musicians, music producers, singer-songwriters, filmmakers, podcasters, influencers, and basically people who want a portable audio recorder and mixer that does it all. Now, while the microphones on board and the preamps sounds great, you cannot compare this, the H8, to high-end audio or standalone preamps, definitely. Now, that being said, the preamp sounds great, right? It's just that it's probably not for people who is aiming for something which is more higher end in the audio gear spectrum. Now, I know I cannot actually explain in full detail the Zoom H8 in a single video like this, but if you'd like to read more about the Zoom H8 to learn more about its advantages and its disadvantages, go ahead and read it on my blog, audiometal.com, which I placed down a link in the descriptions below. And I'd love to hear from you. What do you think about the Zoom H8? Let me know your comments in the comment section down below. And thanks again for watching. Remember to subscribe. Bye for now.